It's the second time in two months that this group of Americans are visiting Cuba. They are here on an art license with a New York-based gallery to see and purchase Cuban art, predicting it's about to boom following the announcement that Cuba and the United States are to restore diplomatic ties after a break of 53 years. What fraction of a percent of America has seen Cuba in the last 60 years? So I think Cuban art is about to explode. I mean, it, it's going up fast, faster than everyone anticipated. Since 1962, an embargo has prevented the importation to the U.S. of most Cuban products, but there are no limits on informational items like books, films, music and artwork. This exemption partly explains Cuba's large number of artists and the international fame that some of them enjoy. Kadir Lopez sold his first piece for $300 when he graduated 20 years ago. Today, he says the same piece is worth at least $25,000. It was an exception of the embargo. Why? It was lucky for us. It's because art carries information. It's a flux of information and that has to do with freedom of expression. But restrictions on payment with U.S. credit cards or direct shipping still apply, making the process complicated and expensive for American buyers. Producing certain types of art in Cuba, like photography, can also be difficult and costly because of the lack of materials and infrastructure. Luis Mire, the director of Cuba's oldest art gallery, says the resumption of ties will not only simplify the process, but also help to promote the work of Cuban artists. New factors are going to come in. New entities, galleries, art centers, foundations, museums. If things get simpler, they will all come with a lot more interest in selecting Cuban artists, and we will share the international promotion cost. The Cuban Ministry of Tourism estimates that ending the embargo could bring one million more tourists to the island every year. The Cuban art world sees this as a double-edged sword. It will cause the art to increase in value and shed light on emerging artists, but increased demand could also adversely impact the quality of the work. I think this boom can be good and dangerous. It all depends on whether we will be able to handle this avalanche of demand, of people who want to discover, see and learn, and others who will want to speculate. We have to be careful. For big changes to take place, the embargo would have to be lifted, an unlikely event in the short term with the U.S. Republican-led House strongly opposing the move. But the value of Cuban art is still increasing, and the speculation that Cuba will indeed, one day, change.